We are talking about Smart AF, and in the August 19th issue of Jack, it's paroxysmal AF catheter ablation with a contact force sensing catheter and results of the prospective multicenter Smart AF trial. And I am with Dr. Vivek Reddy, who is director of electrophysiology at the Mount Sinai Medical Center. And okay, integrated contact force sensing catheter. First, let's talk about that, then the trial. Sure. So uh, just step back a little bit. So most patients with uh, atrial fibrillation, when we do catheter ablation, we use radiofrequency ablation. So that means our catheter has, um, uh, the, the end of the catheter has an electrode. It emits radiofrequency energy, which we use to cauterize the tissue. And then we make our ablation lesion set in order to treat the atrial fibrillation. Now we've been doing this for a couple of decades. The, one of the problems with this is that we don't actually know that we're touching tissue. So we have surrogates that help us, there's some electrical parameters that help us that yet yeah, we're actually touching tissue. Sometimes we can use other modalities like ultrasound which help us uh, um, sort of increase our confidence that we're touching tissue. But we don't actually know that we're touching tissue and that's where this catheter um, comes in. This particular catheter has a sensor in the tip so that you know if you're touching tissue and with what, much, with what force uh, you're touching the tissue. And, and that matters because that directly um, uh, affects how effective the lesion is. Because what we don't want to do is think we made a lesion and actually make an ineffective lesion because then the patients will come back with recurrences because that lesion was not complete. So th this catheter is very similar to the regular catheters that we use. Uh, radio frequency ablation, it's cool, that we, we cool the tip of it to make the lesions uh, safer. Again, that's similar to what we have, but, but again, this catheter has the force sensor. And um, uh, this particular study looked at the first use of this particular catheter in the United States. So you know when you're actually against tissue. That's right. And you know how much force you're touching the tissue. For example, let's say you're touching the tissue, but you have only one gram of contact a force of contact, Precisely. then the lesion is not going to be a very effective lesion. On the other hand, if you have 15, 20, 25 grams of contact, then you, you can make a very effective lesion. And there's, there's, a, there's a lot of um, data that show that where we've correlated the amount of force and the amount of energy required in order to make uh, a certain depth of a lesion. So in this paper in Jack, you're actually reporting on the SMART AF trial. That's right. The August 19th issue. Tell me about that trial. So this trial was the first United States experience with this particular catheter. Uh, it was an FDA trial, so um, this was uh, prospectively discussed with the FDA. The trial design was uh, agreed upon. And um, it was conducted also in a number of different institutions. And again, because it was an FDA trial, the monitoring was very well done, meaning we know it, we can feel confident about the integrity of the data. Um, and, uh, and because it was multi-center, we know it's not limited to just one center. This is a broad experience. And it was uh, conducted in about 170 patients, uh, of which 160 actually underwent the ablation. And um, uh, overall, the success rate was, um, it was 72% was the success rate wow. in terms of preventing atrial fibrillation for a one year time point, which is sort of the standard in the field. What was also interesting is that if you look at those cases in which the force overall was good, meaning that the, that the force was within what we wanted, at least 80%. Yeah, it wasn't a gram, that's right. And let's say at least 80% of the lesions were, uh, with, were quote unquote good force, compared to those cases where for whatever reason, um, uh, less than 80% were in the good range, there was a significant difference in success. In the former, that is in the good group, the success rate was in the 80s, in the low 80s, and in the latter group it was in 66%. So the point is that if you use the catheter, and if you use it properly with good force, then you can have a much better success rate. And I think that was one of the very interesting um, outcomes of this trial. So what are you doing now? Are you following up more patients or? So these patients are continuing to be followed, but this has really taken over the field. Uh, if you look at this, uh, if you look in Europe, for example, um, where these four sensing catheters have been available now for some time, the whole field has changed. I mean, the, uh, all the um, physicians are now using four sensing catheters. Now these catheters are being introduced in the U.S. market with the, with the approval of this catheter, and there'll be other catheters that follow. Um, and it's changed in the United States, too. The majority of the cases we do now are with force sensing catheters. Well, that's terrific, and I think that you know it's not only a creative solution, but the FDA has said they want more devices studied, and I yeah. think this is this is a good start. And it is in the August 19th issue of Jack. So if you want to read more about the Smart AF trial and this particular new device, please go there for Cardiosaurus World News. I'm Executive Editor Rick McGuire.